Good day and greetings from the Great White North. My name is Rickley Poo and welcome to day 162 of a year change and the beginning of week 24 for us. Um, this week we're going to, well, actually before we get into the changes, um, over the past four weeks we've been looking at our sodium intake. Um, gradually trying to get it somewhere between 1,500 and 2,300 milligrams. Um, for me, have not had much success um, because I really haven't been paying very close attention to it. Um, but when we first started this, I showed you where my uh, salt shaker was, or a salt grinder at the very beginning, showed you where the levels were. Um, and as the four weeks have been sort of going on, I've had, I think, one week where I was under. The other three have been hovering around. This week was not great either. Um, I ended the week with an average of around 2,800 milligrams, um, which is too high. Um, still lower than I have been, but not good. Um, so this it's going to be something that's going to be ongoing um, over the next 28 weeks. As we go, we're going to continue with our sodium intake. So I don't think it's going to be too hard to get it down to where it needs to be. Um, the main thing I think that probably killed me was um, surprisingly not my overeating thing on Wednesday. Um, although there was extra sodium in there, I was actually under for the day. And I think probably the aftermath on Thursday took care of a lot of it. But on Friday night, um, after I got home, I made just past, I still stayed well below my calories for the day. But um, the sauce itself was very high in sodium because it was had that like the cheesy, powdery craft dinner sauce powder stuff, um, which is just pretty much all sodium. And I think that's what tipped me over. So um, because it was it was over 5,000 milligrams, I think, for the end of the day. Which is not good. So, um, but I think that's probably what did it. But overall, I'm going to show you the um, level of my salt shaker now as well. We saw this uh, at the very beginning when I first started out, which was four weeks ago, and then gradually as it went down. But after four weeks, now normally um, after about a month, I'd say that my salt grinder would probably be easily two thirds of the way down, if not empty, that I'd have to refill. Um, because I used to use a tremendous amount of salt. But, as of now, this is what the levels look like. Which is not great. Um, that's still a tremendous amount of salt to be using in the run of a month. Um, actually, when I say it like that, when I say the run of a month, that doesn't actually... No, that's actually not that bad. <laughs> um, because when you think about it, you're probably looking at... Uh, two, three, twelve. Like, twelve teaspoons, so twelve days worth. Out of 30, uh, yeah, hmm, that's still pretty bad, but better than it was. So that's where the levels are now. We're going to keep an eye on this as well as part of our you know, ongoing struggles with this. Um, so I'll keep you updated every four weeks on this from now on rather than every week because this week we are starting something new. We are going to be – plop, there we go. This week um, we're going to be starting in on monitoring our fat intake. Now – for the vast majority of us, this probably isn't going to be too hard to do because it's not going to be a matter of saying, all right, cut out all fat. We can't do that. We need it. Same thing with sodium where we need a certain amount to function properly. Your body does need fat, not just for fuel, but to help things just moving along. Now, for almost all of us, we have more than enough stored up. We don't actually need extra stuff. But where our goal is to get to a point where we're eating a healthy, balanced diet, um, we still need some fat for an intake. So um, the main thing for this is that we're just going to look at, for like last week we started just watching the labels to take a look at the, you know, the fat content, not really to start tracking it or anything, but just to be aware, to look at it and say, this has a lot of fat in it, this has a little bit of fat, very, very basic stuff. Um, so this week, on top of the sodium stuff, we aren't stopping with the sodium. We're going to continue on with that, but we're adding a second thing to track on top, or a third, if you include the calories. The second thing to track on top of it is the fat, and the main thing that we want to focus on that is just to keep it at or below 30% of your diet. And that's it. Nothing special. We are tweaking the types of fat. We're going to, Over the next few weeks, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be looking at the saturated fats and the unsaturated fats and the trans fats, which are on their way out anyway. Um, so we will be looking at all those different things and what they do. Um, but for the time being, our main thing is to keep things very broad and do that little small, little small, 
little change once again and get it to a point where the amount of fat that we're eating is to a proper level. Now, as I said, for the vast majority of us, that's not going to be too difficult. Uh, my fat content right now, well, my fat content is about 112%, but the fat content of my diet at this stage um, is around 25%. It's actually lower than it should be. But the vast majority of, or the, I keep saying that. <laughs> yes, anyway. Um, the reason for that is that over the past five months, um, we've been adding more fruit and vegetables, so that's going to cut out a lot of the fat. We've been cutting out a lot of the sort of junk food and fast food, and even a few weeks ago when we started just being more attentive to the amount of processed food that we brought in. Um, so the fat content is naturally going to lower um, to a, a spot that's going to make things easier for us. Um, as I said, we aren't really worried about the types of fat just yet. It's just mainly to get below that 30% mark. Now, I don't know if there's any real um, health issue if you go way below, if you cut out entirely, um, if you're like 5% of your diet. Um, it's probably okay for people like us, but I don't know. So we're going by the recommendation that it should be around 30% of your overall daily calor caloric intake. Um there's an easy way to check this in MyFitnessPal as well. If you go into MyFitnessPal and go into Nutrition, um, there's a section there that says Macros, and it basically just tracks protein, fat, and carbs. So you can go in and take a look, and I mean, you can go in and find a little more detail if you want, but generally, you just want, you'll, it'll be able to show you, you know, it's like 50% for carbs, 30% for fat, and 20 for protein, somewhere around there. Um, so as long as we're hovering around that 30% right now, that's going to be okay. As I say, over the next few weeks, we're going to get into a little more detail into it. Um, but for right now, that's all that we need. Now, my fitness panel has actually um, added something in there. It's a premium, um, what do you call it, upgrade, I guess. Um, I'm not going after it because you don't really need it. Uh, it's good if you want, you know, readily available information to you. You can go in and say, oh, great, which are the foods that are going to be highest in fat? And it will list off what you've eaten that week that was the highest in fat. But what you can also do is go in and take a look and the free version just says you've had say 42 percent fat and you go in you look at your days and go uh oh, wednesday was really really bad go into wednesday take a look and you go oh i had three pieces of cake chances are that's where it's coming from so it just takes a little bit more digging you can go in you can find this information on your own um, i don't think that you really need the premium one um, and if we can keep this going as long as we can where it's free good th good times good things <laughs> good thing times um, anyway, um, there are, yeah, th as the weeks progress, um, we're going to be adding in new little bits of information, um, finding out what sources of fat are better for us. Um, and there are, and not, not everything is the same. There's fat from, um, animal products, which isn't great. There's fat in fruits and vegetables. Even that has fat in it. So, you know, th those are healthy ones. There, the fat from fish is much better than fat from margarine. So all of these little things, these will come in together as we go along throughout the next few weeks and stuff. But for right now, I just sort of want to get us to a point where we have a nice bar that we can... Is that the word I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, we'll just use that. We need a starting point, basically. And I think that just keeping it at a very basic number is the same thing that we did when we first started tracking our calories. Um, just getting to that 30%, that's our main goal for this week. And like I say, for a lot of us, it's not going to be that hard to do. Mine's hovering around 25% right now. Um, but for those of you out there that do have, you know, that are sort of on the other end of it, if it's higher than 30%, there are a few things that you can do that are going to help things out. It's not going to be a matter of, um, you know, just saying, all right, well, then I can only go vegan for the next week. We aren't ever going to end up doing that. You do need fat in your diet, um, just depending on where the sources are coming from. But there is a warning I do want to give first. Um, there are some things that you can do to help things out. Like if you're going to cook a steak, trim as much fat off it as you can. Stuff like that. That's what's going to help you. That's what's going to bring down the fat content. Um, it's going to, you know, add more fruits and vegetables to it. Be careful what sort of fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. But for right now, have a go. Eat whatever you want when it comes to fruits and vegetables. Um, but those little things are going to come in time. But the main thing that I want to sort of warn against is you do not do not, I'm not going to say you don't have to. I'm going to say, please do not. Don't go out and buy 
a whole bunch of low fat and fat free things and all these other stuff that you just simply do not need. There's a number of reasons for that. Number one is we're trying to stay practical here, so we need to have that flavor. There are two things that make food taste good, sugar and fat. That's it. Aside from all the spices and artificial flavoring and everything else, that's pretty much it. If it doesn't have enough fat or sugar, it's going to taste horrible. Um, which is why so many of us turn our nose up at vegetables for the majority of the time. Um, but it didn't really make sense. Anyway, um, so for the vast majority of products, I keep saying vast majority, <laughs> for a lot of products, if they're cutting out the fat, then it doesn't taste like their product anymore. So in order to counteract that, the only thing that they can really do, aside from adding in more flavoring and things like that, is up the sugar content. So a few weeks from now, when we start tweaking our sugar, which I think is going to be the hardest of the three things to get rid of, um, we don't want to start adding more sugar into our diet now. Because when it comes to you know fats and sugars and everything else, sugar just turns to fat anyway. So there's really no difference. So when you're buying a product, for example, let's say cookies, which we shouldn't be buying anyway, but it happens. So if you're buying a package of cookies and you say, okay, good enough, there's 20 grams of fat in a serving. And then you look at the fat-free ones. Chances are it's going to be 25 or 30 grams of sugar in there, as opposed to the 20 grams of sugar for the regular ones. And the main reason for that is because when they take the fat out, it just, it doesn't taste right. It tastes weird. So they either have to up the sugar or up the fat, whichever one is going to do it. So the vast majority of the time when they're taking away one thing, they have to add more. So a good rule of thumb to sort of look at is say, okay, if it says 50% less fat, chances are it's got 50% more sugar in it. Now, it's not always the case. There are some things that don't tend to do that. Um, there are some products that will still do it, but certain brands won't. I'll give you an example. Um, even from the time I was a little kid, I always liked cottage cheese. It was one of those things that everyone goes, it's disgusting, but I always really, really enjoyed it. But I never really liked regular cottage cheese. I found that the lower the fat content that the better it tasted to me. And even now, if I have my choice between like zero fat, like just 100% fat free cottage cheese, um, which I'm not sure quite how they do that, but fat free cottage cheese or 1%, I'll go with the fat free or, you know, regardless as to what it is. There have been times when I haven't been able to find the fat free stuff and all that's left is like regular 2% and I just, I simply won't buy it. I'll just go without. Um, and for the, a lot of cottage cheese, they do the same thing. If they're cutting out the fat, they add in a little bit more sugar to give it that flavor. But there's a brand that we get here um, that the sugar content is exactly the same. Um, it's like one gram or zero grams. One of the, I can't remember which one. But across the board, they don't add any sugar in it. They remove a lot of the fat, but they just assume it's going to taste worse. Uh, but for me, I prefer that. Um, I don't know if it's because it's not doesn't have that slimy, creamy gooeyness to it. Whatever the reason is, um, I do prefer that. And the sugar content is exactly the same as the regular stuff. So if I buy cottage cheese, that's what I'm going to buy. So if you run into something like that where you're looking at it and you're going, okay, here's the regular one, here's the fat-free one, or 50% less fat, or whatever it is, look at the sugar content. Um, just look at the nutritional labels anyway. And if they're pretty much the same, then if you want to, certainly buy the fat-free stuff. But in general, that's not something that we should be doing. Because, again, if they're taking one thing out, they've got to put something else in there. And then we have to take that away anyway in four weeks' time. And that's going to be our next step. So it's just it's going to cause issues in the long run. So when you're going to get stuff, um, rather than saying, well, I still want these crackers or cookies or whatever it is um, that we shouldn't be buying. But um, instead of saying, well, I'm going to get the fat-free ones, then Get the regular ones, but that's when we start need or we need to start exercising some self control, because part of the problem with having the fat free stuff is that people tend to eat more of it anyway. And we talked about this before when it comes to sugar, that the food is designed to keep you hungry and keep you getting more. It's not a, a horrible like Mwahaha thing. It's just that's what sugar does. It gives you a huge burst of energy and then it makes you hungry and then you crash. So. Adding more in there at the expense of fat isn't great. So that's one thing. If you take nothing else away from this, um, you know, keep it around 30% or below, preferably. And don't buy the low-fat or fat-free stuff because you just don't need it. Um, it's not going to make that much of a difference for what we're trying to do. And our goal is to get a balanced diet 
not you know a fat-free diet because we do still need those in there but as i say over the next few weeks we're going to be sort of looking at different sources um getting it from cheese for example is different than getting it from peanut butter which is different than getting it from fish which is different than getting it from hamburger so um just little things that you can do um like i say cutting the extra fat off of meat when you're cooking it um buying lean hamburger instead of medium which i made the mistake i bought hamburger a while ago and it was medium instead of lean i didn't notice that until i got it home and there is a just visually there's a big difference when you're cooking it because you're essentially boiling it by the end of it um and yeah so i haven't had medium ground beef in a long long time so i had to drain it keep cooking keep draining it was really weird um but little things like that get lean ground beef if you're going to be getting it for those of you that are out there that don't eat meat your fat content is probably okay anyway so you're probably going to be all right um when you're looking at like butter and margarine and stuff like that or olive oil um or whatever oil that you decide to use to cook with um just sort of tweaking the levels that way getting it down to roughly one third of what your calorie intake is should be okay um so that's that's it for this week that's pretty much it. Um, let's see, did the update for the sodium, which we we have to keep our eye on that as well. Um, something I'm probably going to talk about tomorrow, actually, is that I did this with the water, and I find myself, unless I really force myself and try to jog my memory, I find I'm doing it with the sodium, and it's going to be difficult to do with the fat as well. When we have our calories in front of us every single day, all day, um, it's easy to keep track. You can say, okay, I can only have this much more and this much more. With the sodium and the water and stuff like that i haven't been tracking it the way that i should be i always end up having to go back in at the end of the day because it's not right in front of us so i'm hoping that there's something i can add in there that's gonna fix that but we'll address that tomorrow because that the whole other topic of things that we can do um for right now though that's it for this one i'm going to put some information down in the description below um the spots to the mayo clinic and harvard health along with a little graph just to give you a brief overview of the different types of fats. We're going to be going into these in a little bit more detail over the next few weeks so that we have that information and so that we can say, okay, I want to get fat from this source as opposed to this one and which one should we be avoiding. Um, the trans fat thing is, well, we've talked about that subject before, but hopefully in three years' time that's going to be gone, so it's not going to be really a point anyway, but we will address those as well. Um, so you can go up, you can take a look at those two things. It's going to give you a very, very brief overview, like one or two quick little blurbs um, as to the different types of fat that are in there and which ones are good and which ones are bad. It touches on cholesterol as well, but I think that's going to be a thing down the road. Because um, you can't have too much information all at once or our heads will explode. Mine will anyway. I don't know about you. Some of you may just go, no, it's fine. You can keep giving us information. Fine. Flood yourself with information. It'll be fine. Um, but I'll put those in the description so you can go and take a quick look at those. It'll just sort of give you an idea as to what we're going to be talking about over the next three or four weeks. Um, I will keep an eye on my sodium levels as well. Um, I'm going to update those every four weeks now. So um, we need to sort of focus in on one more thing now. Um, but overall, I think we're still on track. Um, I did make a little bit more progress with weight loss this week. Or last week, I should say. I keep saying that because today is Sunday. Um, that not as much as I thought it was going to. Uh, with the treadmill, but it's still progress. I still lost, so I'm happy. It's good. About a pound and a half in total. So I'm getting very, very close to a significant milestone. I just spit all over the place. Anyway, getting very close to a milestone um, that I'll be very happy with. And if all goes well, hopefully by next week, by the start of week 25, I should have hit my milestone, which is actually right on target with what we're trying to do. So it works out well. But anyway, it's nice to see that number going down again instead of constantly going up and down and up and down and everything else. But anyway, I'm babbling on. We've gone, oh, we have gone over a little bit, but uh, that's it. I don't have another 10 minutes of yammering to do. So keep your fat content over the week. I'm not going to be able to do it day by day. It's going to go up and down. But just overall, at the end of the week, um, you want to get that just below 30% um, for your entire calorie intake. That's going to include everything, but my fitness pal pretty much does everything for it. Again, with our sodium, we want to keep it somewhere between 1,500 and 2,300 milligrams um, on average throughout the week. And then our calories as per usual. So we have three things we're tracking now. So not too bad. Hopefully we're going to be doing well. But we'll keep going as things progress. And we've got another few weeks of more information and hopefully getting ourselves to a better place. But for the time being, that's it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please poke the like button for me. And in the meantime, keep yourself warm and fuzzy, and I will see you in the next video.
Bye-bye.